started me on my way. The Lord is blessing me he, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Did you say the Lord has blessed me right now? Right now. Right now? Right now. Let's give him a hand, Augustus Williams and Bill Meyer. Good morning, everyone. How do you feel? Come on, y'all got to do more than that. How do you feel? Because I'm telling you, some people are not feeling today at all. So we should be grateful that we're here today. And this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm excited because every day I grow, I go greater into the Christ presence within myself. So we should all just enjoy what's happening. Welcome to Detroit Unity, where the opportunities and challenges of living meet the awesome, the dynamic power of God. We all should know that because God is right here within each and every one of us. So we say thank you. And thank you for those who are joining us via the internet. And we welcome each of you into our wonderful spiritual community. You know, God is blessing us right now. Do you feel it? Amen. Did you enjoy seeing the sun today? Well, feeling that warm weather, 70 degrees projected? My, we can't handle it. Yes, I can. I will enjoy it really as much as I can. But we'd like to begin this service with the reading of today's daily word. So I'd like to invite up my friend, my colleague, my brother, Reverend David Stubbs. We say good morning to you, Detroit Unity. Good morning. Today's word is healing. And our affirmation says, God's healing power is moving through me. I am open and receptive to God's healing power within me and within my dear ones. I trust with absolute faith that God is greater than any worldly condition. I cannot limit God. I listen to the still small voice within and feel guided along my feeling journey. If fear and worry get the better of me and I start to feel anxious, I call forth the healing power of the indwelling Christ. I spiritually surrender my concerns. When I pray for my dear ones, I do not focus on their condition. Rather, I see them as the divine beings they are whole, prosperous, and spiritually perfect. As I pray, I perceive God's healing presence moving through me as my beloved. This presence is the health beyond the illness the abundance beyond the insufficiency, and the life beyond death. It is the truth of my life. Our scripture is taken from the prophet Isaiah, the 58th chapter and the 8th verse, and this is what he says, your healing shall spring up quickly. Amen. Amen. This time, this morning, as we do every Sunday morning, we invite you to participate with us, join in with us to our congregational mission statement. And we know that through the power of the spoken word, we can bring things into existence. So therefore, would you please affirm with me our congregational mission statement. Together, our mission and goal is to prayerfully demonstrate the teaching of Jesus Christ through the study and practice of truth principles. Likewise, we utilize our voices in the same manner 
as we affirm our vision statement for the Living Temple. Shall we know this together? We, the spiritual community of Detroit Unity, joyously carry out the vision of renewal and prosperity for ourselves, our spiritual home, and our world. This week's food for thought says this. Your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within that you have built against it. Think about it. The writer was Rumi, and let me give it to you once more. Yes, go ahead. Your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. Love is free flowing. And when it does not flow freely, it is not the result of love, but it is the result of us. Let us say amen. amen. If this is your first time joining Detroit Unity, we welcome you and we encourage you to join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for our in-person service. Be sure to sign the guest book located in the lobby. However, if you're unable to come to the service in person, watch us at any time at www.youtube.com forward slash Detroit Unity. Having said that, we're getting ready for our brothers and brothers. They would come on and bring us that tune. Amen. Amen. Now y'all know this hymn. I'm going to sing it one time and then y'all going to sing it with me. Okay? This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. This is a day, this is a day that the Lord has made for me. Now y'all join with me. Come on, y'all sing it. This is a day, this is a day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made for me. Now give God a hand right now. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Now, let us affirm our statement of truth. There is only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe. God, the good, omnipotent. Now, let us say our prosperity thought of the week. Life in Atlantis comes only through great love. Amen. Let us now prepare for our morning meditation by reflecting on the goodness of God and by singing the Lord's Prayer.
that moment and we go to that very sacred place within ourselves a moment what we call meditation so I invite you to take everything out of your hands and place yourself in a very firm and comfortable spot and please know that meditation is a moment that we give to God but we allow that divine presence to flow within us and so we just say thank you. So let us begin by taking in a deep breath. Breathing in and letting go. And as we go into that inner chamber within ourselves, I want to take a moment to say that we connect with millions of other individuals who are meditating in this very moment. And as we meditate on this moment, I call upon you to see the world striving to be in a better place. And we know that these last few days, the threat of war has been coming towards us as battles in Jerusalem and Israel and the Gaza Strip. We have to know and stand for world peace. Dr. King said, the church cannot be silent while mankind faces the threat of war. If the church is true to her mission, she must call for an end to the arms race and to move towards world peace. We take this moment right now in the silence. I want you to feel peace inside of yourself. I want you to visualize love pouring upon you and you're sending that love out to bring peace into the world. Every prayer, every thought can change a situation. We can see it, we can affirm it, we can believe it. In this moment right now, let us just take a breath and breathe in that silence of peace. Dear Holy Spirit, we affirm that love is the key, that it is that harmonizing energy that can bring peace that represents a sweeter music, a cosmic melody that is far superior to the discourse of war. Somehow we must transform the dynamics of the world. And truly we know when we say, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. And that very thought, hold it in your heart have the courage to see it moving out of you as love as love for humanity and for mankind and so it is amen
Christ shall come with a shout of acclamation and take me home. What joy will fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble. And there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. beautiful song, yeah. Augustus William and Bill Myers. Mm. For those of you who do not know me, I'm Reverend Artel Gandhi, and I'm very excited to share my message with you. Yes. I have entitled my talk, The Abundance of God's Love. But first let me center myself in prayer. I am now in the presence of pure being and immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. I acknowledge thy presence and thy power, O blessed Spirit. In thy divine wisdom, now erase my mortal limitations and from thy pure substance of love, bring into manifestation my world according to thy perfect law. Last week we celebrated the beginning of the month with the power of love. represented by the disciple, John. the corresponding color, Pink. and the location is back of the heart, yes. the month of love. 
So what is love? In unity, metaphysically, love is a divine attribute. It is an idea in the one mind, and we know that one mind is God. Love is the power that binds in divine harmony the universe and everything in it. God is love, and love is God, and we are love. Last week, Reverend Guy's scripture was from Mark chapter 12, verse 20 through 31. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. I want to piggyback and highlight, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Because before we can love others, we must love God first and ourselves, right? Yes. And we know that God truly loved us because he gave us his only begotten son. And all through the Bible, there are lessons of how God loved us. There are two biblical stories that stand out for me in the Bible that help me to understand God's love and his power. The biblical authors show us how God's love for humanity is selfless, just, and unbreakable. The authors show us who God really is. I think the prodigal son is a prime example of understanding a father's abundant love. We know the son asked the father for all his wealth, mm -hmm. and he lost everything, yes. and he had to go back to his father. And the father, because of his love, was so happy yeah. to see him coming. The Bible says he ran <laughs> to his son. He did not walk, he ran. The father's command to bring the best robe for the returned son yes. is a sign of dignity and honor, proof of the prodigal's acceptance back into the family. The ring for the son's hand is a sign of authority and sonship. The sandals for his feet are a sign of his not being a servant as servants did not wear shoes. The father ordered the fattest calf to be prepared, and a party is held in the honor of the returned son. Fatted calves in those times were saved for special occasions. This was just not any party. This was a complete celebration. Sometimes we, me included, many times we think when we do something wrong, God will punish us. We punish or mistreat ourselves, not God. Let's not get that twisted. <laughs> His father was more interested in restoring than in rebuking. When we turn to God, we find that same welcome in the form of peace and relief as when we stepped out into human consciousness. God never leaves us. We leave God. That is the abundance of God's love. Everything God does is impelled and influenced by his love. So how are we loving ourselves today? Are we taking care of ourselves? Mm -hmm. The second story is found in the Old Testament, the parting of the Red Sea. God not only shows his love, but he shows his power. Yes, yes. Metaphysically, the Red Sea represents a fixed sea of the universal thought that has become part of the very world in which we live. Yes, yes. We find it as the race belief in life separate from God, and it has taken up its abode in the sense of man and forms a part of his physical existence. 
So, the universal thought for some people is, I am bigger than God, and we're going to do it my way. Yeah. That is what's going on all over the world today. <laughs> Ooh, but we have the power to choose. Am I part of the universal thought of loving myself and others? The human concept that life in the body is mortal must be set aside and the God dominion declared. There is but one life, God. There is but one life, God. I want us to imagine the love and power of God. In Exodus chapter 14, verse 21, how Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided and the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground and the waters were a wall unto them to the right and on the left. And the Egyptians pursued and went after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. The Egyptians gave chase in their chariots. But soon come a cropper, realizing that God has lent the Israelites his assistance. So they retreat. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength with the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it. And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots, and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. God's love, God's, God's power. God is saying, these are my people. I will show you my love and my power. Don't get in the way of my love for my people. They may not love themselves, but I love them and I will use them in the demonstration, and he did. The abundance of his love the abundance of his love, what God will do for us. In both stories, the prodigal son and the Red Sea, people turned away from God at times, but what I want you to take from this message is that this lesson is that God loves us unconditionally. No matter how far we stray from God, he is always willing to take us back and forgive us, is he not? Amen. Last week, Reverend Geis also talked about how the eclipse blocked the light for just a moment. But the light is still there, and so is God, always there. Always. A big God. If our light does get blocked for a moment, don't stay there like the prodigal son return to the light return to the Father. The abundance of his love is always with us. With all the things that are coming at us, the election, the wars, the sicknesses, I want us to stay in prayer and try to do our meditation before we enter the world. Because lately, if we look at what's going on with the human eye, yes. it looks very big. It is quite interesting that so-called educated and intelligent people can follow and worship negative influences in the visible world as the real power. As the real power, not the spiritual power, not God's power. They're looking at their power. The things that are going on around us, there's a lot at stake here. Yes. We must do our part, and we have to pray and keep our eyes centered on God. 
And it can be hard to love sometimes, to love others. We all have that neighbor or cousins that we don't like see coming. <laughs> and if that feeling gets bigger and bigger, then we start sending out negative energies ourselves instead of loving energy. When my neighbor came out the other day, I had to ask God for help. <laughs> I felt a strong dislike with the loud music and the language. <laughs> so I know I have some work to do. <laughs> Jesus had negativity swirling around him all the time. As I studied, I found so many scriptures to prove it. Luke chapter 2, verse 52 says, he had to grow in wisdom and nature. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8 says, although he was a son, he learned obedience from the things which he suffered. Yes. John chapter 4, verse 6 says, he became weary. John chapter 19, verse 28 says, I am thirsty. Matthew chapter 4, verse 2 says he became hungry. John 11, verse 35, he experienced sorrow when Lazarus died. Jesus did. Matthew chapter 26, verse 38, in Gethsemane, he grieved deeply to the point of death. Mark chapter 1, verse 13 tells us Jesus knew temptation. He was in a desert 40 days, being tempted by Satan. But he chose to stay focused on his assignment yeah. by putting God first. Yes. Putting God first is how we see the abundance of God's love. Speaking of negative energy, I recently had a person call me and they said, Artel, did you see the news? And I said, I don't watch the morning news. And there was not a positive response behind my answer. <laughs> but I don't start my day out with who shot John and black America buys the gym shoes. Mm -mm. And I don't let the news be the last thing I listen to at night, which Reverend Argentina taught us all, if y'all remember. I don't want to go to bed with that on my mind. But what I do do is I record the news, and then I can watch one at my convenience. That works for me. Yes. Sarah Lindbergh, M.E.D., is a freelance writer focusing on mental health, fitness, nutrition, and parenting. Watching the news can help you stay informed, she says, but too much of it can also lead to feelings of worry, anxiety, and depression. Yes. Okay? In the book, In the Flow of Life, and we've had that class here, excellent class. I think it was just also taught by Reverend Stubbs. It says, every morning before setting out into the world or before making initial contact with the world through watching or reading the morning news, it is a better part of wisdom to prepare yourself by a prayer or meditation to get consciously in the flow of life. And we all want to be in the flow of life. It is a simple matter of getting your lights turned on before you face any darkness in the world or in human behavior. In the flow of love, you will tend to see and respond to the divinity of all people instead of expecting the world and the people in it to make your day happy or harmonious. You will establish yourself in the kind of consciousness that you desire to experience, letting it flow through you, right. <laughs> letting it flow through you and go forth from it. <laughs> the abundance of God's love is not in the negativity or material world. Yeah, sure enough. Those things can be taken away at any given minute. Okay? Our wealth can be here today and gone tomorrow. Mm -hmm. 
living in God's abundant means after God, seeking after God and his goodness. It means using our wealth and that we might have to give to others and we should give to others and help our community. How are you going to know the abundance of God? Watching too much negativity, being surrounded by too much negativity. So I want us to limit our news consumption to one block of time each day so we can experience the abundance of God's love. I have a trip planned and I got a call this past Thursday and I was not feeling very well because for the past three weeks I've really been doing a little too much. The weight program that I am in, it teaches me to take care of myself by using the synonym HALT, H-A-L-T, okay? Which means never to get too hungry, never to get too angry, never get too lonely, and never get tired. Yeah. HALT teaches me self-care. But I had become very tired. I know this is a way I can block God's light because I'm not fully present. So I use HALT all the time. Because we can get caught up in these worldly things if we are not careful. And I was very tired. The other person on the call said, <laughs> this is really going to be a talk. I tell, I had a dream about you. You were sick. And I thought, oh my God, I'm already not feeling good. And this person going to call and tell me, I tell you, <laughs> I'm sick. But see, we always assume the worst, especially when we're tired. And we can make unnecessary mistakes. She said, oh no, listen to this. You had a husband. I had this dream and he was good looking and medium tall and brown skinned. And he had a truck with metallic gold. The truck was gold. Something you see in the auto show. I said, mm. She said, we were at a conference and a diverse crowd. She had it down to a T. And we had to take you to the pharmacy because you were sick. And she said, but we were just trying to surprise you. You thought I liked him. But we were just trying to surprise you. <laughs> so she wrote this dream in detail. Anyway, <laughs> I'll tell you where am I going with that. Oh, the reason I'm telling you this story is because when I was in ministerial school, my teacher said, one of the students asked, can we date anyone in the church? <laughs> the teacher said, uh, I don't think that would be a good, diet, a good idea. And I said, in the group, I said, but I got some nice looking men in my church. And I got some nice looking men coming to the church. She said, I'll tell. And suppose you break up. I said, oh, that might be a hot mess topic in the church. <laughs> I thought I just wanted to tell you all that story <laughs> because I am going on a trip. <laughs> she didn't know how the dream turned out or what the surprise was, so we'll see. <laughs> but I want you all <laughs> to have a good week because I'm going on my trip and see what the mystery surprise is. And if you do see me on the internet, I will be one of those mysteries only showing the abundance of God's love. <laughs> I have to remember, I'm always forgetting when I get up here. All about God's love. Ooh. What a talk, Hartel. <sighs> now, who? We prepare to bless and be blessed yes. through our tithes and offerings. Let us affirm our prosperity prayer. Divine love in and through me blesses and multiplies all that I have. 
all that I give and all that I receive. Tithes and donations can be made through the Gillify app, PayPal, by mail, by phone, or in person. Together we prosper. Yes. We got a song coming up. Bill Myers and Augustus Williams. Bless me. No, we can never all give God. I'd like to take this time to bless our offering. Yes, yes. We give thanks to all the good that God is. And for this offering, we bless it knowing that God's abundance flows forth freely. And so it is. Amen. And we welcome Peter Mason. Okay, this week's announcements. All right. Thank you so much, Reverend Artel. And thank you for that powerful lesson today. It was very powerful, very good. Thank you. My name is Peter Mason, and the Christ in me greets the Christ in you. All right. And uh, Reverend Gregory Glass' class, The Art of Spiritual Healing, has resumed. The class is held on Tuesdays from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. via Zoom or in person on Tuesdays from 6 to 7.30 p.m. You can sign up uh, in person or through the lobby, uh, through the Zoom. You can contact the temple office at 313-345-4848 or email dutreception at gmail.com to sign up for the link. Join the prayer chaplains in the Fred Robertson family room after today's Sunday service. Spend a little extra time in prayer and feel the presence and power of God. Join the Monday night's prayer circle focusing on Christian healing by Charles Fillmore every Monday evening at 6 p.m. on Zoom. We will be having Fellowship Sunday in Maud Fellowship Hall today after service. Hosted by our Board of Trustees, there will be light refreshments and any answers to your questions you may have of the board. Donations are encouraged. Visitors eat free. 
so invite them to fellowship with us. For Fellowship Sunday coming back, we will need volunteers to help out. If you could help just one Sunday, even just one hour, all help is welcome. You can help serve, help prepare the meal, or help to collect the donations. You can meet with, with one of the lay ministers in the lobby after service and choose a day that you can help. April is Financial Literacy Month. On April 7th, 2019, Armagrip presented savings banks to the youth teens and the youth of unity. She stated that she would add to their banks 10% of the amount they saved by the first Sunday in May. Armagri invites these teens and youth to bring their banks back to the UT on April 28th, 2024, and meet in the Margaret Wood Auditorium after service. Please bring a letter stating the amount you have saved in your bank, and it must be signed by your parents to receive the 10% added to your bank savings. Reverend David's class has begun Thursdays. April at 6 p.m. The class will be, reading, will be reading Working with the Law, Truth Principles for Successful Living. The book will be available for purchase in the bookstore for the class. The class will meet on Zoom and will be on the, ongoing until the completion of the book. Call the church office for the Zoom link. Next Sunday, April 21st after service, Detroit Uni Temple presents Dr. Kofensi Chiki will be speaking on human rights activists and the road to reparations. The lecture will be from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. in the Margaret Wood Auditorium. Love offerings are welcomed. If you would like to help us decorate the stage for Mother's Day and give that special person a beautiful flowering plant, you can do so by ordering a Mother's Day flower. The flowers are priced at $15 each, the last day to order is Monday, May 6, October, uh, May 6, 2024. Orders can be made at the ticket booth. For those looking to know more about Detroit Unity Temple or become an official church member, our What is Unity classes will be held on April 14th, 21st, 28th, and May 5th. After service, you will learn more about the core values of the unit movement and what makes us unique here at Detroit Unity Temple. Is there Regina here? Uh, hi, Regina. Yeah, please come on out. Tell us about the unit. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Yeah. Well, good morning, my family, Detroit Unity Temple. Good morning. Good morning. All right. We're going to have fun, 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 more trips and more activities. And one of the things that we're doing, and I've, I'm sure you've seen all of the information out for the people of African descent through the group celebrating the soul in 2024 at Detroit Unity Temple. So if you haven't had a chance to go to Detroit Unity Temple, you have your chance now. Unity Village. Unity Village, thank you, Unity Village. And so I've had those flyers out for months now. This is the deadline. We're, we need to get all of your information in tomorrow so that you can get the additional discount as far as the $100 is concerned. And I have quite a few people that have already put in for the trip, and I'm looking for anybody that it wants to put in the trip for today, and we'll key it in for you tomorrow. If you have any questions, my name is Regina Cobb. I'm out in the ticket booth, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have about this trip to the Unity Village. And what we're going to also have in May, we're going to have flight kiting, and flight kite, flight kites flying all over Bilal. So I want you to come out for that. We're also going to have in June the fireworks. So come see me about all that detailed information because we need to have fun, fun, fun. Amen. And what I'm going to do is have all that information out on the board at the ticket booth, and if you have any additional questions, feel free to come help, because that's what I'm here for, to help. <laughs> okay, you have a blessed day and an enjoyable week. Hey. Uh, all right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Regina, and thanks for all that you do here at Detroit Unity Temple. Lastly, for those of you trying to reach the church during office hours, I'll repeat that, trying to reach the church during office hours, please press zero to speak to someone. 
You can press zero two as soon as the ma message starts to play and you will be connected to the reception desk. So please remember that as you go throughout the week. That's the announcements, thank you so much. Thank you, Nina. Oh, I tell you, it's wonderful talk, wasn't it? Let's give it another hand to our tell. I'm going to, I'd like to share with you that Chester Vaughn, husband of Mary Vaughn, has made his transition. Condolences, cards, and well wishes can be sent to 18555 Klinger Street in Detroit, Michigan. Many of you know Mary, so let's make sure we reach out to her and extend that to her. I'm going to invite up Reverend Artell and Reverend David to stand with me. <clears throat> I asked them to stand with me for this one reason. We have to take a position for world peace. The world's going through a period, whether it's in the Ukraine, whether it's at the borders, whether it's what's taking place in Jerusalem or in the Gaza Strip, you need to know where we stand and we stand for world peace. Because if we don't stand for world peace, it almost would seem as if the world is out of order. Yes. And we have to make sure that we vibrate that energy to our community and to our families. You see, sometimes a person don't think they can make a difference. Well. But if you sit idly by as these things began to occur, at least send a vibration or a prayer for world peace because God will work the things out that needs to be worked out. So I want us just to remember that, to take that in heart because we can make a difference by just determining that we are stand for world peace. Not about taking sides, we're calling for peace throughout this world. Just as our peace song will say later. But I want to say just thank you for allowing me. And if you want to stand with us, please stand up. I can see we want to stand up for world peace. Give yourself a hand for that. Because I want them to know where Detroit Unity Temple stands. You may be seated. Thank you. I have to go back and <clears throat> ensure that Chestline was in the board in the bookstore having a reading with the children and the banks that were being talked about financially through this Financial Awareness Month. We're going forward. Now, please join us in Unity Worldwide Movement Ministries everywhere as we pray and believe the following prayer. We know that God is a love that has no end and a power that knows no bounds. God's healing power of divine life is restoring, healing, and revitalizing our world in this very moment. We let go of any fears of anxiety and we affirm that all are safe, healthy, and protected. We bless all those who support us in maintaining vibrant, radiant health. We express divine life in all we think, say, and do. We bless our global family with radiant health, peace of mind, and abundant love. And as we bring our service to a close, I would like to take a moment to give a heartfelt thank you to everyone that has continued to support us with your tithes and offerings. We truly cannot do what we do here without you. And so we know right now that our goal is, as I said, is to go forth. And we know that right now we will support the love, the light, and the teachings of Jesus Christ. So please remember to invite your friends and families to join our 10 a.m. service every Sunday in person or to watch the playback at 12 noon by logging on to www.detroitunity.com and then click the red start broadcast button and we'll take you directly there. Now let us all stand as we get ready to sing our prayer for protection and peace song. And remember the board is providing fellowship downstairs as well. The light of God surrounds
Have a wonderful Sunday. We'll see you downstairs. <laughs>